Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. How's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty good, so I hope everybody's doing pretty good. I'm sorry about the lighting, it's super late, and with the light on, it just seems like such a bad picture, but I'm still gonna do the video anyways. I have today some popcorn chicken, I have some onion rings, and I have some homemade German potato salad that my mother made. And the way she makes it, she uses uh, apple cider vinegar and a little bit of oil, salt and pepper and onions and sometimes cucumber in it. This time she does not have cucumber in it, but she does put cucumber in there once in a while. So, and I have some dipping sauce for my chicken. That is so good too, this stuff here. And I have some ketchup for my uh, onion rings. So, I was going to share some good news with you guys today that happened just the other day. Mmm, so good. Of course, I have my diet soda here too. But my ever since February 2014 my son has been having to see an orthopedic surgeon regularly I'm um, not so regularly lately they've been um, every so many months apart but at first um, he had to see him a lot more often and I'm gonna tell you guys why because it's good news he is released now from the surgeon the, the orthopedic doctor and um, he does not have to go back Potato salad. That's so good. But back in 2014, my son, I'll, I'll tell you what the problem was in a minute, but I'll give you a little background detail first. Back in 2014, it was February. My son came to me telling me his knee hurt him really bad. So, I told him, well, we'll go and we'll get you some of the icy hot and you can take some over the counter Tylenol and hopefully it'll help you out. So he tried that. And a few days later, he came to me. And he was, had been going to school in between too. He came to me and told me that um, his leg, his knee hurt him really, really bad that he was having trouble walking. So. I set him up an appointment to see the doctor, but like by the next day or two, it got really bad. And so I took him to the emergency room. I'm gonna try not to cry, but I, I still have a hard time with it because um, I feel really guilty over some of it. So, but I took him to the emergency room. They did x-rays and they came back with they just didn't see anything. Now we went to emergency room for like knee pain or something like that. You don't really see the emergency doctor. You see um, like the assistant doctor, you know, maybe they're like, um, don't, don't have a degree of a doctor, but they have a degree that they could do basic you know, less serious stuff, like not a heart attack or stuff like that. You would see, you know, obviously go right to emergency room doctor. But, um, so we were there and 
X-rays came back. His knee looked fine. And he says, but maybe he sprained something. Let's get him some crutches. And they got him some crutches. And said, just put, you know, take pain pills over the counter and stuff like that. But if he's not better by Monday, take him to his primary care. And that was on a Friday after school that I had taken him to emergency room. All weekend long he complained about pain. And he got less mobile and less mobile. So that Monday morning... I made an appointment for that day for him to go after school to see his primary care physician. And mind you, his knee had been hurting him for about a week, come, come this time, week, maybe a week and a half, progressively getting worse. So I took him his primary care and at, at that time when he got home from school he was in really seriously horrible pain so and he had been using his crutches there crutches ever since he had been to the uh to the emergency room and he was having trouble with any movement with his leg he couldn't move it, it was so painful so I took him to the primary care, went over, he was just at the hospital, they did an x-ray, didn't see anything, but his pain is excruciating. But when I, what I should have said first is, when I got him to his primary care physician, he was so badly in pain and not mobile, I had to go get a wheelchair for him. And that's how bad he was feeling. So I took him into the primary care physician, explained, you know, he had just been in the emergency room. He cannot walk. His leg hurts him that bad. He could walk with the crutches, but it was really excruciating pain even there too, even though he was not putting any pressure on his leg at all. She pulls, she gets his x-rays because the hospitals are fairly close to her office and looks at it and says, well, you know, nothing showed up. You know, it's just his knee. He's being a big baby. He needs to walk around. And I said, well, I don't think, I don't think he should even go to school. I said, he's really having a hard time. I think he needs to be off and give it some rest. I said, when you run him a slip for school, that he could be off for a few days and rest because obviously something was causing him a lot of pain and agony. He wouldn't get up to even come eat or nothing like that because he literally could no longer walk. And she said, no, he's just being a big baby. He'd go to school. There is no problem, you know. And so I, I think, I hope I don't cry. <laughs> That's my first part of my guilt, listening to her, knowing how much pain he was in and how badly he was suffering. I should have never sent him to school the next day, but I did. I took him. I was driving him at this time because he couldn't even get on the bus. And I asked him if he was okay to go to school and he thought he'd be okay, even though it was in really bad pain. I wish he had told, <laughs> told me no. Because I took him to school. And then I asked him also at the school. I said, you guys have elevators. Can he use the elevators? And they said no. That they were just for. Um, what did they say? Like. Big. and You know. If they have to get something big and out of. And they didn't always work right. And so. 
you know, not a lot of the kids. I said, but the, teacher, the, the doctor wants him to, you know, to use the elevator if they're available. And they said that they would not allow it. So I dropped him off that morning with his crutches. And and I text him all day through school, are you okay? How are you doing? Do you, if you need me, come get you, you tell me. And finally, after a few hours there, he had gotten so bad that the school called and said, you need to come get him right away. So, they wheel him out in a wheelchair and bring his crutches. The school nurse did, and I pulled the car up real close. And he couldn't get out of the wheelchair. He could not move his leg whatsoever. It hurt so bad. And um, it took me, her, and two guys, because we had to be so careful because he was in so much pain. He was crying in pain, literally crying in pain. It was, it was so horrible. He um, couldn't move. Any movement was so painful. So we tried carefully, you know, Two of us underneath his arms and, you know, somebody trying to pick him up. And put him in the car. And I, I, I was stupid. I wish I would have took him straight to the hospital, but I didn't. I took him home. You know, I believed the doctor. The doctor told me it was his knee. I believed it. I felt really bad because I yelled at him a couple times and told him, quit being a big baby. The doctor says it's just your knee. I still feel guilty to this day and probably will for the rest of my life because <laughs> I made stupid decisions. But... I can't remember if he told me no, he just wanted to go home and rest. I can't remember. Or if he wanted to go to the emergency room. But I should have just took him straight. Or called him. I actually should have called an ambulance right there at the school. But I didn't. So somehow we came to the decision that he came home. I backed my car up as close to the door as I could get it. He gets out and he can't get up the steps to get into the house. Finally, he does make it in. He's resting. Can't move. The pain is excruciating. And it got worse and worse through the night. Towards the evening. And I told him, I'm taking you to the hospital. When he got up, we got him into the car and we got him to the hospital and when I got him to the hospital, I pulled up to the emergency room, went in to get a wheelchair and as he, he was getting out of the car, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm probably talking too low, when he was getting out of the car, I could see that his whole leg was disconnected and flipped backwards. His foot was turned backwards, facing behind him. And I take him into the emergency room and they, um, or as stupid as can be, I'm sorry, but the nurse tells him he needs to get on the scale and all that stuff, which they do every time you go to the emergency room, but not when you see somebody's in a wheelchair and can't get up. And I said, he can't get up. And she asked him again. I said, look, he cannot get up. 
and I kept complaining to him he needs to get back to see the doctor and then this time since it was a second occurrence he would see the emergency room doctor and not the assistant so after six hours they finally get him back there And the doctor comes back, we tell him all the appointments he's been to, how he's, everything that's been going on. And the doctor says to me, I'm going to check something. And so he goes and orders an x-ray and he checks my son's hip. Well, when you're going through a puberty, you um, have your growth plates. And if you're very active in sports, or very active in school, which he was, and you could be overweight or have any problems. And it affects boys or girls, but it seems to affect boys more. You get something called slip capital femoral emphasis. And what it is, is here's your femur bone and here's your hip, it cups in your hip, but you have a growth plate in between. Well, the growth plate had slipped and knocked his whole leg out. So his leg was just dangling there. And the doctor took the x-ray and he come back and he said, he's not leaving this emergency room. He goes, I need to call a surgeon right away and see if they can take care of him. He said, because at any second that bone could hit his artery and his leg and he will bleed out in minutes. Not only was I very upset, I was very mad, knowing that my son could have died at any point when this got so bad and nobody was taking care of him. It just, it just infuriated me. So he called surgeons around here where we live. Nobody wanted to do it because it was, it was, they said it was one of the worst ones they had seen. It wouldn't have been so bad had it been treated right away. So they call um, Nemours Hospital and the sur there is an ortho uh, pediatric orthopedic surgeon there and he said I will do it bring him here so they had to transport him by ambulance because he was not allowed to leave the hospital any other way but by ambulance transport him there and I rode with him and when that doctor saw it he said it was the worst one he had ever seen he had to actually speak to other doctors about it because it was so bad and it was, and it, it starts to cause um, vessel damage, bone damage. It all starts to die. And he had just not seen one so bad. So he sat down and he talked to me and my husband. And he said I, he could not put my son's leg back exactly the way it was where both feet sat like faced out like this. He said his leg is so bad that I'm going to have to put it Back as far as I can but it will not be normal so now my son's feet are more like this because when when they go to rotate it he said if I rotate the leg too much I'm gonna cause more vessel and more bone damage and we don't want that so we all agreed to it they put the femur back and turned it some put it back into the hip and they put a um, screw I think it's just one screw in there so um, it was just horrible to know what kind of pain and suffering went through had he been diagnosed right away and they said this is very common with kids that are in sports and stuff like that when they ask all these questions it should have been one of the first things they checked because he was going through puberty and stuff and they didn't check it But this was a wonderful hospital. It took really good care of him. As a matter of fact, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, when he got to the hospital, he was in so much pain that they gave him some really, really, really strong medication. And he's never taken anything like that before.
So he started hallucinating. <laughs> Talking to people standing beside me when they always the only one there, and he asked me a couple times, "Was he floating in the air?" And I'm like, "No, you're not." And it actually made me feel good knowing that he was pain free for that little bit of time. You know, it sounds crazy, you no, know? <laughs> but I, I was actually, I was actually relieved to know that he wasn't suffering because he had been suffering pretty badly. But um. I guess what I'm, I just want to let people know about it. Slip capital femoral impetus, especially if you have teenagers getting ready to go through puberty. Common sign is knee hurting really bad, hip hurting really bad. But what it is is the hip is really actually hurting, the doctor said. But it radiates to the knee, so they think it's the knee, but it's really actually the hip. And it, it, it make sure they would check that out right away. Had he been diagnosed right away, he still would have had to have surgery. But he wouldn't be in this um, shape that his leg is now. He just released him this month, month um, December 2016. After almost two, two years of seeing this doctor, he had to go every two weeks at first. To keep eye on that one and check this one constantly because they were so worried it was going to happen to the other leg. It was this leg, the right leg, and they were worried about the left leg too. But they had to always check this one, make sure it wouldn't slip because his growth plate was still open. As long as the growth plate is open, it can happen. So we just we went and both growth plates are closed. It cannot happen now. So I am so thankful that um, everything is better. He released him. He told him that he could no, cannot join the military, obviously because of a pin and, and his leg not being normal, or probably do police or fire, which he was a little bit interested in fire rescue, but he cannot do any of that. I don't know. I, I feel really bad. I really do. But I love him so much and I tell him this all the time and I hope that he knows that um, he means so much to me. But um, I just wanted to share that with you guys, especially with anybody that may have a teenager at home. Please be aware of this. Um, he could have lost his leg. He could have lost his life that quickly because they, they said if that femur bone would have hit his artery, it would just take a couple minutes for him to bleed to death. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, I'm happy that he's released. He's doing good. Um, I'm very thankful for everything. And I'm so happy. So, I hope that this story may have helped somebody. Or may prevent something like this happening. You know. But... I, this is running on too long, so I'm not going to keep you guys anymore. But I just want to say have a wonderful day or wonderful evening, depending on where you are. And just know that I love you guys very much. And I thank you so much for all your support, all your love, and all your kindness. You guys mean a lot to me. And I'll talk to you all later, okay? Bye-bye.